to speak their mind. Can we uh, move on, uh, Ali? Next slide, please. Next. So when we say best practices, so we have just taken first module of our grade eight, and here uh, we are just showing you best practices, some of the best practices. Say, for example, you have to use, uh, you have to teach smart home, home activities. So you can use Lucid Chart to design smart home. You can use Animaker for uh, uh, telling them about smart city. Maybe you can use uh, Canva for smart city. And uh, because visualization play a very important role in everyone's life, it helps us in better understanding make relationships and form trends. So one can use all these, maybe Lucid or Animaker or Canva or any other uh, applications to make them understand the concept in a better manner. Writing interactive stories using Inkle Letter, Inkle Writer uh, and using Padlet for online assessments, using rubrics for assessment, so all these we are going to be covering in our uh, today's webinar. Next slide, uh, slide please. Harun. So here we have just shared a lesson plan which we have already taken in the previous session as well. And the link for this I am just sharing in the uh, chat window as well, so that you people, if you if you want, you can just go through it uh, later, you can download it and go through it. And in this particular lesson plan, you know, we all are making as a teachers, we are making our lesson plans before starting our classes. So it is very, very important for all of us to understand the concept that you know, how we are going to take what are we going to teach? How are we going to take what are the learning outcomes? What are the norms which we are going to follow in our virtual classroom? and what all methodology we are going to use uh, to teach that particular topic. So these all are going to be and how we are going to assess at the end because assessment is very, very important at the end to know how much learning has been gone. Next, uh, Harmeet, over to you. You can take it from here. Thank you, Sangeeta. Thank you, Sangeeta. Uh, it's great to hear about the views that you've just shared and as Sangeeta very nicely explained to you, see a lesson plan is a teacher's detailed description of the course of instruction and decides the learning trajectory for a lesson. So we as AI teachers, you know, design daily lesson plans. So we know what's a guide for our class learning. We, so the details may vary depending on our preferences as a teacher, but the subject being covered and the needs of the students are covered in totality if we have a learning trajectory in clear. So do follow up the plan that uh, we have shared with you in the chat. It should be it should be very helpful for you in that case. So now coming on to the first uh, agenda, second agenda point that we are talking about today is the smart home. So a smart home is basically just a house for which automation is built, a smart home automation system. Uh, we should be able to control lighting, climate settings, thermostats, entertainment systems, and various appliances. It may also include uh, home security, such as uh, access control and alarm systems. So when they are connected with the internet, the home devices are an important constituent of the IoT. So basically, just to explain in very simpler words, not going into the technicalities, a home automation system typically connects control devices to a central hub, or what we refer to as a gateway. And the UI for controlling the systems can either be a mobile app or it could be a desktop computer or a web interface that may also be accessible offsite. We are very easily able to control the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning uh, of a system, the occupancy, the appliance control, integration with the small grid, smart meters, household uh, security system, pet care, uh, air quality control, smart kitchen, and most easily that we are looking around in our house are the using voice control devices like Amazon, Alexa, or Google Home, etc. So here are just a few examples that we have used in our uh, book also that you would be able to see. So the idea over here is not to make the child design uh, using the uh, 
using any particular software to how to design a floor plan the idea over here that we are looking at as per what we are we had our understanding and i've also shared is that the child should be able to know that when we are making a house as a smart house then all these devices are interconnected with each other so just to give them so this activity can either be done with a simple paper pencil we can actually if it it would have been a in it would have been a scenario of a physical space we would have had crew activities where we could have asked the students to draw it out and we could have easily placed small sticky sticky notes over there and explained that these are the places which are the points where you could be requiring the smart devices so we are basically making use of uh, a software called as lucid chart uh, now lucid chart is a web based uh, proprietary platform that allows the users to collaborate on drawing revising and you know you can share charts and diagram so it is integrated into the google apps marketplace so what i am going to show you right now is that how you can help your students to pick up a ready template like this and then they can place these uh, smart devices in that in that house floor plan so how do you do that so since it is an app which is available on the google marketplace so what do you do you open your google drive and uh, you just click on more option which is available to you so since it is not connected to you since it, since it is not connected to your email id by default so you have to connect using the connect more apps option so once you click on connect more apps this kind of you just type in the search box let's say use it chart and the moment you select it it will give you a continue option click on it it will ask you to allow the access to your drive and other information as we would have connected with any other app now the point to remember over here is that why am i doing it through the app and why am i not going to use it chart.com if you go to use it chart.com as a website and try to enroll yourself as a person email, using person email id or your school email id it will give you a 7 day free trial and then it will not be available after 7 days but if you are logging on to it as in if you are connecting it to your drive as an app and if you are most importantly trying to connect it through your school g suite id it is completely free of cost to you and even if you are doing it from a personal email id on your google drive then it is available to you with certain restrictions so the pro account would probably be permissible would not be permissible to use for all the applications but then you should be able to excuse me harmeet uh, i have a question here ma'am i will recommend please uh, as we have requested please uh, keep your uh, questions till the end of the session we will give you enough okay, time you. for the discussion at the end please thank you thank you very much or you can write it down in the chat also and we will have a discussion at the end thank you very much okay, okay. so uh, once you have connected it through the through your google through your google drive this particular option which was not available to you earlier will now be available to you and you can actually just click on it you will have a lot of templates which are available to you in the form of a flow chart you will have uh, mind maps organizational charts and you can pick up from any of these templates so for example for our class activity if we are picking up as a floor plan now if you look closely this was a screenshot that was taken from my personal email id so you will see that it is showing premium infinity sign over here that means these are the five plans which are available free of cost for you so you can pick up for practice purposes you can pick up or you can even design your own using the shapes and the menu that is given to you availability over there okay but because this was taken from a personal email id this is showing you premium over here but if you had logged in using your g suite email id it would have been completely free going forward so as an example i've just for the purpose of the workshop i have picked up an office floor plan right so i just designed a uh, picked up the template and on the left hand side of the panel you will see just like you have your a uh, paint brush software or adobe shop adobe software so you will have the option of adding either a shape or adding some images picking up some icons so you can actually just pick select one of them and just import it on top of your design basically if we just go back with the examples that i had shown you earlier look at this look at this example so if you would look at this is my basic expectation that i want my student to be able to figure out that if it is a smart enabled house what are the different areas and how are they going to be interconnected with each other this is the one activity so just to do that particular part we are going with just picking up and placing these articles over here so for example if it's a security camera 
and I am looking at uh, the home security option from my uh, app, I can check that out. If there is an occupancy threat over here, or if I'm looking at the setting of the smart thermostat from my phone, which is something that is happening very uh, easily uh, from uh, offices or otherwise, or if you're connected with your smart devices at home, like smart kitchen or smart washing machine, you can actually do it easily also. So this gives the student an idea of how to place these particular devices inside the home. And this is basically what the idea of teaching them about a smart home is all about in artificial intelligence. In the AI curriculum, again, I'll reiterate, we are not looking at teaching them about user chart. User chart is just an application. You can make use of a PowerPoint presentation. You can make use of any simple software of, of, a, uh, of a paintbrush application, which is putting boxes together. And it helps us to understand that. Going forward, just to explore, similarly, a hand in hand goes the concept of smart city. I will re I will request who's, whoever's mic is on, please kindly mute yourself. So a smart city, just to understand the concept of a smart city, a smart city is an urban area that uses uh, different types of uh, electronic IoT sensors to collect data. Now, this data could be collected from citizens, devices, buildings, and assets. And then it is processed and analyzed to monitor multiple systems. Now, the smart city concept integrates uh, ICT and various physical devices connected to the network to optimize the efficiency of city operations like transportation and uh, wastage, uh, waste disposable system and connect to the citizens. So the, the, city, the city council people are able to connect to the citizens centrally itself without actually having to connect with them. So now, since all the features are connected with each other, how do you start teaching this particular lesson? So the hook could be a YouTube video that you show to the students, right? They could be, you could ask them what are the uh, components that you are looking at and how would you want to uh, identify the areas. Now, given this kind of a conversation that is done for the students, once it is done, what is the next step? You ask them what is it that they think should be there in their smart city. Now, what kind of work could be done? Now, we could have responses from them in a Google form also. But we move a step way ahead. We give them the idea of designing either an infographic or we ask them to design a small video uh, which, could be utilized, which could be created on any software. Again, I'm saying you could ask them to make a PowerPoint presentation, a movie, or anything. But the software that I have picked up for the sake of the presentation today is that of Animaker. Or for the designing infographics, I'm making use of the uh, Canva. So these, again, as reiterated in the earlier example also, for designing a smart home, we were making use of LucidChart, completely free, open source, available for any usage for a student. Similarly, over here, we do not have to teach the students how to design these boxes, color the background, no. The idea is for them to think out of the box and give their expression of understanding of what, what artificial intelligence is all about. Now, very recently, like for example, I'm talking to my grade nine or 10 students. They, the ideas that they come up with, that what all things that they could be making use of in their smart city is amazing. Let me just show you one example. So uh, as an example, uh, let's say if I talk about Canva. Okay, So Canva is a graphic design platform that allows users to create social media graphics, presentations, posters, documents, and other visual content. And over here, the users can choose from many professional design templates and edit their designs and upload their own photos. So they can either drag and drop interfaces available. They can drag and drop over there. And most importantly, this platform is free to use. And if you want to make use of templates for professional purposes, you have the pro version also available. So you can pick up from any of the templates that you are having in mind and look at the examples. So on the left hand side panel, again, you just have to uh, log in through your email ID. Just look at the expressions that the students come up with. What kind of a safer community is when you're talking about enhanced uh, citizens and more effective data driven decision making. So these are the ideas that come from the students. The idea is, what is it that they are looking at? Look at another example. In our school days, we weren't given this kind of an option. But we here, we are allowing the students to think about it and give us an idea. And another software that I'm talking about right now is a 2D editing, uh, video editing software. Now, Animaker, just like any other video editing software, is a DIY 
video animation software okay it is cloud it is cloud based it allows users to create animated videos using pre built characters and templates so again all you need to do is just log in uh, or sign up through your email id and it also gives you an option of creating a video again what i'll reiterate over here is there are many softwares which are available for us in the market that we can make use of and it is not necessary that we should be uh, sticking to only one option these are just one of the many you have adobe spark you have animaker there are so many which are available free of cost nowadays so for animaker the most beautiful part is when you pick up a template it helps you design your own avatar okay so it lets you design what kind of a gender you want what is it that you're looking at and then you can pick up the different constituents of hair eye makeup and students really have fun designing their own avatars and making use of their own avatars in their own animation so you can decide which template do you want so just look at what kind of an so if i'm looking at an explainer kind of a template now if we just go back to the curriculum in the curriculum we have a lot of uh, uh, reference to sustainable development goals now teaching about sustainable development goals can become really uh, can become really very difficult because the ideas that students might come up is would require a lot of expression in the form of video so what do we what do they do should we ask them to download images from the uh, google images together in a powerpoint no let's give them the idea of designing their an avatar and what is the message that they want to put so there is this one small uh, example that we try in our classes that is uh, we use code.org and in code.org there is one certification available which is for ai for oceans so this is a very small uh, small course of let's say 15 20 minutes at the most where the student is first of all introduced with what machine learning is and how we can train our ai model from the purpose of training by teaching them by teaching the model what is fish and what is not fish so more we teach us more we teach the concept of uh, what is trash and what is not the student the ai model is able to recognize and then when we test it it is able to give us a score that you know this is what you were saying was correct and whether the training was done right or wrong another example that we have very recently used in our classes is that of a teachable machine so these are some other ways of making it come out visually so just like sangeeta meant uh, said in the uh, beginning of the session that you talk about visualization visualization has a longer impact on a student then you have the medium is very important so if we give them the idea of designing their own videos and you know giving out what they feel how they can make those particular uh, those particular uh, sdg goals available and make bring out their own ideas so just look at over here one expression that i would like to show you okay here just a second so i presume just hold on i'll just uh, can you hear the sound sangeeta uh, no harvi sound is not coming okay just give me a second i'll just share my tab again with the sound just give me a second
just one of the ways by means of which we can actually uh, figure out how to go about designing the activity. And uh, okay, now over to Sangeeta uh, for uh, the algorithm. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, Harmi. So as uh, you know, uh, Harmi has shown that you know the video and how you are going to take it to the students. She mentioned that too. So even I would like to share my views on it that you know when, whenever we are bringing any topic to the class, it is always better that we just don't start teaching them you know the topic straight away. The topic we must not tell them what is this, what is that. Uh, so instead of doing the uh, this method, we should always prefer to give them the videos and ask them to uh, give their views on those videos. What all are their observation on those videos or maybe, you know, the research work and then whatever they are going to come up with, then we can relate those with the uh, topic so that actually they will learn in a better manner. They'll understand the concept. They need not to mug up any definition. Now I'll take you to the further, uh, uh, you know, how we are going to introduce other topics, like how to uh, build an algorithm with an interactive story. So here we are not bringing another application to teach them how algorithms work, how you can teach them that what is an algorithm, and uh, steps you should follow, how the conditions are to be followed. So basically, if we talk about algorithm, these are basically nothing but simple steps that are to be followed to solve any kind of problem. So uh, again, it is always better to make students understand the term once they do it. Now I'm sharing this particular story, which my student did by herself. I have just introduced uh, her to a particular you know application i've just told her that this is the application and use this application and create one story using this application and share the application so this one is the story which my student of grade 10 has created and shared with me so uh, you can see that in the first place uh, i mean in the first page it is shown that the name of the story and then by whom and then this is the preface of the story and then the story began with the other things and then there was there are only two uh, options coming here turn left or turn right so once you will click on turn left it will take you to a particular direction that is the left side and if you just click on turn right it will take you to the uh, right side uh, data which is shown here in this uh, slide and uh, this way uh, it can further keeps on branching so this particular application is used to basically teach the students not only the flow of uh, control using simply uh, writing a story so story writing can be done by any of the child there is uh, uh, no IQ level required to write a story. They can make their own stories and maybe uh, first of all the teacher can make her or his own story to begin with and then they can be asked or maybe they can uh, be asked to you know create their own uh, like I did this activity in my class instead of uh, going directly to the system I asked them to draw a floor plan like her ma'am took uh, just now told using lucid chart i've just asked them to draw it on a piece of paper take a a4 size sheet and just draw how you want your uh, uh, smart home to be so they were like they came up with the ideas like ma'am i am not good at drawing i don't know how to draw so i just asked them make a box for a room and just mention that this is a drawing room room d m uh, dr you just write down that this is your drawing room or this is your play area just mention that this is the play area and you just have to keep on mentioning that this is what and use some symbols to express what exactly you want in your uh, smart home uh, life okay so <clears throat> so the students uh, took sheets and they have drawn it so when i taught them story uh, uh, story uh, write the story so i asked them 
to make that plan itself as a uh, as a plan for your story writing and use it to create to build the story so they did it very nicely and they have they came up uh, with a very nice story and and i have also told them that if you want to make some changes you can do it while making the story but once it is done then you can share that story with others and how they are going to say for example i told them that you keep a medical box somewhere at a particular place and i'm looking for a medical box so how i will go and reach to that particular place to find that so now i will uh, earlier we used to have another uh, google story speaker but it is now not working so we came up with another uh, way of what another application with the help of which students can write interactive story and they can learn uh, this yes relationship between a uh, it will teach you that also so inkle writer is a free tool which helps to write and publish interactive stories where no programming skills are required no setup is required you can create your own stories just by clicking on the you can create your login and maybe you can just click get started or you can sign up with a free account and you can start uh, writing a story and you don't require to install it you can you just have to just write uh, www.inklewriter.com uh, in the browser as a url uh, next slide please so when i say in inkle writer it actually offers fun joyful learning it will give you give the children the innovation the creativity the concept of logical thinking so if i think of that how we can relate this to our artificial intelligence topic then it is building uh, the logical thinking the concepts of computer skills into the mindset of the students because we need to tell them that how things are working so if at all you want to teach them ai you cannot directly go to the artificial intelligence you first of all have to bring them to a plan that whatever we are doing will have to make a plan of action to do anything all right so if if at all you see the main screen is uh, on the uh, slide right now and here there is written untitled story that means this is the place where you just have to click here and put the title of your story and then by whom and then there comes section 1 and every time when you open it will come once upon a time that means you begin with your story like that so it is not necessary you will have to begin with it you can just click here and you can start writing your story so the main screen is like this here is sign out new open import tutorial map contents write read so even if you just simply give this to your students uh, as an activity to do at home and later you can ask them what is their observation or what is uh, what story they build upon or they they share the uh, story with you like you know even i can share one of my story with you all which you can test it out later you can see how it flows and you know how what i'm telling you right now and when you see it on the browser how does it look like so uh, next slide please harika so here i started with my story as a title of my story is treasure hunt which i have shared with you just now uh, and written by me so i have written first of all section 1 the brief history regarding my story and then let's begin so here i reach a two direction so whenever i want to split into directions here comes the add option i just have to click on this add option the moment i will click it will uh, give you the writing pad so i have written left turn and there was one more button coming down as an add option i clicked on that and i clicked on uh, and then i have written right turn so once you want to write an action on left turn how do you write it so you just have to click on this arrow button which is coming uh, in front of left so the moment you will click on this arrow it will take you to the place it will open up the space now this is showing the right turn uh, arrow 
right? As soon as you clicked on right there, it opened the right one. And whatever you want to write, you write here, pick up the key and move forward your way. And again, this is divided into two different sections. Then again, click on add option uh, and again, keep on adding. So that way you are teaching them branching. That means conditional programming you are teaching. But again, you are not using if they are doing by themselves. They are learning by themselves by doing and practicing. So as I mentioned, the students nowadays learn more by doing rather than, you know, somebody teach them how to do it. Uh, next slide, please, Samit. So once you do it, then uh, uh, I have uh, shown you in the main screen that there was one button called map. So you can teach them that, you know, whenever we talk about algorithm, there comes flowchart as well. That is the graphical representation of algorithm itself. So when I click on map, I get this figure of the whole story. Now, I could not fix it in a proper slide, but, uh, you know, you can uh, try by yourself. And whatever you have written, you see the arrows are coming. And, you know, when I'm taking left turn, it is saying dead end and uh, you've lost. And right, then it is giving you one another uh, liner. And then again, it is branching into two and it keeps on going. Next slide, please, Sarvika. So this one was the map view. And the same manner, once you click on this map view, the earlier slide I have just shown you, that will appear. But if you click on contents, then it will show you everything in the algorithm manner. Okay, section one, the story begins. Then what is what? When you click on this, that means now reaches two direction. Two links are there. What are the two links? And in the same manner, if you just want to uh, go to the next one, next slide, that is the read. So when you go to the read, you will find your story this way. All right. And when you share the link, as I have shared with you all, when you click on it, it will keep on asking you that what is the next? What is the next? And to move uh, up and down, please look at the arrows. To go back, you can look up the arrows. Uh, so this is the story in the read view. Next, please. So now next is, so now next one is that, you know, once we have done all this, at the end, whenever we are teaching something, we need to assess the students that, you know, how, uh, how much have they learned? Have they learned or not? Or do we need to repeat the topic? So whenever we are supposed to do this, then the assessment tools are required. So basically, the assessment tools are various methods which are used to evaluate and measure the amount of learning happening in the class. So let us see one of the assessment tool which can be used to take feedback, responses, and students work in real time using Padlet. So we have just introduced here that Padlet is an online tool which can be used to uh, assess, uh, you know, uh, as an assessment tool. All right. So here is an example shown. And even we are giving you one of uh, the assessment link so that you can write your feedbacks into that Padlet and share your views uh, in that Padlet. Uh, over to you, Harmeet, ma'am. You would like to add something to the Padlet? Uh, thanks, Sangeeta. Uh, see, basically, Padlet uh, is being used uh, tremendously in so many places because it has suddenly become a very popular tool because recently uh, many people have been facing this idea of how to share student work uh, with their seniors or you know how to accumulate all the student work in one place so if you are doing any activity for example we are talking about designing making a design plan for a floor plan or what exactly are they talking about uh, using uh, what, what could be the plan for their smart city so if we are doing a paper and pen activity where exactly the data, where exactly the mobile data is not reachable or the devices are not there or, you know, uh, where the teachers are facing a very 
very crucial problem of uh, how to get the activity how to get the students engaged all in one so depending upon what kind of a differential class you are teaching it also makes a very good idea for self evaluation and peer evaluation because in this tool when the student when everybody puts in their work or puts in their feedback the others also have the option of commenting on it putting emojis on it and it is a very powerful tool when it comes on self reflection so looking at the whole work so as an example if you would just see these were some uh, just some text ideas that we had started with when the session was taken by me on smart home that you know identify five different technologies which you saw during the video so for example when i introduced smart home and smart uh, city to you i told you that you know uh, we, this could just be the hook of the lesson so if i want to understand that what are those five things that they captured were they watching the video clearly or not were they actually engaged in jotting down the notes or not or was it just looking at a video and forgetting about it so i just asked them what is it that they saw what is it that they want to learn and what is, what are those things that they see around them in their own house nowadays which you could call as being something related to ai so they were able to jot this down another very important way of, of assessing a student is a rubric so i if you just look at the design over here uh, this is just a simple poster rubric that i have shared with you over here but basically if you look at a rubric a rubric means a scoring guide which is uh, you know which is used to evaluate how the what is the quality of students uh, responses so if i were to put it simply in simple words it is like a set of criteria for grading assignment so if i have a padlet with student work a rubric will help me because it will usually contain evaluate evaluative criteria you know it will have quality definitions for those criteria different levels of achievement and i will also have a scoring strategy now if you look over here it is often presented in a tabular format and teachers can basically use it for marking and students can actually when they are doing a self evaluation uh, of their own work they use it where they are standing right now what is their learner what is the learner progression now a scoring rubric is basically just an attempt to communicate expectations of quality around a task okay it provides a basis for self evaluation student reflection and definitely peer review now idea is that and it is aimed basically for accurate and fair assessment and most importantly it fosters understanding it indicates a way to proceed with subsequent learning or teaching in my own classroom so as a practice activity for this i have just i'll just share one link with you now all of you are requested to please go to this particular link uh, ankita can you please share the link in the chat if you could that would be a great help uh wait uh, harmeet i will share the link because the okay. link shared is not the correct one so okay. i'll just share it all right okay just give us a second please i am extremely sorry if the link has been is wrong okay should not so be. here it is yeah here it is have you shared yes yeah. i have shared yeah this one is the correct one please don't use the previous link okay so if you were oh, i'll just so this is uh, this should be visible to you uh, you will be able to see it simultaneously in real life action itself so click on the plus sign at the bottom it is as simple as that double click anywhere where you want to post your clipboard on the clipboard so we are about 40 people in the session right now uh are people writing yeah everyone is writing i am looking at it okay unlock there is actually nothing for unlock uh harmeet uh, you just share the other one here you have shared the other one okay come on see 
what went wrong okay is, uh, is are you okay oh ho oh. apologies i am looking at another link yeah Apro that's what i'm saying yeah. i'm extremely sorry Oh, there it is. Oh, great. I'm extremely sorry. I was sharing the wrong screen. This is uh, really appreciated. Such a great. So you can see for yourself when once you're doing the attachment, if you click on the edit post, I can actually edit it something also. You can attach when you're clicking on. Uh, I can also uh, as expand the post for a particular student. So for example, if somebody has uh, shared for example something like that so i can even expand the post and show the student work over here and explain that you know this is wrong this is right this is what you could have done i can annotate using my annotation tools of my sharing class medium that i'm making use of so it is like this it's right now available so if i were to answer over here for example if i have to comment over here i could have easily said there so it is there so it's up to you how you want to go about it so this is this was one of the examples that was supposed to be uh, shared with you uh, thank you very much for your continued support and uh, now going back to our presentation uh, the two books with the updated syllabi of uh, employee including the sections of employability updated sample papers extra activities and all the sections that have been given by CBSE in 417 code are included in the 8th and 9th curriculum. Uh, we are already in the process of uh, finalizing our grade 10th book. And in the, in the following series of uh, webinars that we will be doing, we will also be now picking up the activities that we have done and explained in our book. And we will try to pick up all the activities that over, are over there. We are going to, uh, it will be, it is supremely appreciated if you could also, while writing your feedback, share if you would be interested in going ahead with the webinars series that we are talking about right now. And uh, our host, PTP Publishers, have also come up with other books which are over here. Um, before we go to this particular part, for the vote of thanks for. Uh, the session to Surbi and Ankita and Manish sir, we would request, we would like to take a few questions. Let me just look at the meet chat. Okay. Ankita, do you have some questions with you posted in, in the chat? Okay. Okay. Uh, so somebody had started. Uh, Harmeet, sorry. Yes, uh, there is a question from Vanita. Yes, ma'am. Uh, can you please send us the website names related to AI and coding? These are very basic questions I can see. So if you can uh, answer that, there is one so, more. Yes, please. As a, a follow-up follow to the email, uh, to, as a, with, a, with, a, with a vote of thanks for the certificate, uh, we will share the web website links that we have shared in this webinar uh, with Ankita ma'am, and she will probably be sending it out on the revert mail. Okay, we will share all the resources. We've so, anyways shared the lesson plan at the start. We will send that as an attachment to that thank you mail also. There is one question uh, asked, what is the relationship between AI and Inkle Writer? Okay, so yes. Sangeeta, would you like to take this question? Or should I? Yeah, yeah, no problem. So uh, when I say, I mean, when I introduced uh, this application, and in fact, we have introduced any of the application. So it is not required that you take only Inkle Writer as an application to teach the concepts. Basically, AI directly you cannot jump to the top. You cannot teach them what is algorithm, what is the flowchart, 
how you're going to work with conditional statements. Students keep on struggling. Uh, you know, we all are teaching 11th, 12th computer science from so many years. And we find that, you know, they are coming to grade 12. And there also they are struggling between the looping concepts and conditional branching. So this is the right time with the help of the story speaker activity or maybe there are some games where they understand the looping concepts and uh, uh, there is a game R of code which I usually before uh, you know introducing uh, any conditional statement or, uh, uh, or the topic flow of control before taking that topic I just give them time to play a game uh, in that particular application that website and they learn and then if you introduce the topic then they understand it very well so that is the only idea behind inkle writer so it is not nothing we are doing with artificial intelligence in the okay. inkle writer yeah uh, army you want okay, to add on something yes to it? i want to add something to it okay so um uh, you who had asked this question uh, this is nina ahuja who has asked okay. this question. hi Good, uh, good evening, Nina ma'am. Uh, Nina ma'am, uh, could you please come on air for a minute? Nina ma'am, could you unmute yourself, please? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Good evening, everyone. Yes. Hi. Nina ma'am, uh, when we are talking about the voice control using artificial intelligence, okay? When we are talking about, uh, see, there are basically three strands of artificial intelligence data, image processing, and NLP, okay? So when, how does Alexa recognize or Google Home recognize our voice? Because we store that our, our voice print is saved in it. And over a period of time, it recognizes our choices and the way we speak and is able to give us recommendations or otherwise. And it is learning over a period of time. Now, the point is that over there, what it is doing, it is performing machine learning over there, right? To make the choices, to extract the choices from our daily requirements and then provide suggestions what we should be listening to or what how to respond to a certain voice command. Now, initially, CBSE had launched Google Story Speaker as a part of the curriculum. And that was very well explained in the book also. But now what has happened is, and when what were we doing over there? We were using the concept of a Google Doc. We were having a template just like Sanita introduced of that of the Inkle writer. And over there, the idea of introducing the Google Story Speaker was that whatever you write over there, the logic, you know, if you're in a forest, you move to, you move straight, you move right. So if you take a concept of a smart home plan, floor plan, at that point, how do you say you enter the house, turn towards the right, you will see a security camera. Will the security camera go, let you go to the, uh, let you enter the house or will not let, let, uh, let you enter the house? The idea is for the child to understand the concept of logic, analytical reasoning over here. Which particular, just like we teach algorithm and flowcharts to our senior classes, make a decision based on a condition. So similarly in Inkel, so now there is no availability of Google Story Speaker in our country. We have seen it that it is not able to work it out. The Story Speaker, whatever the story was there was easily played either on an Android phone or on a Google Home device, separate home Google Home device. So when it spoke, the child understood what the story you have written in Google Doc was easily explained. But now what has happened is with Inkle Writer, at least we are giving the child some kind of understanding of how to formulate a logic based on a condition. So we could come up with, we are looking for different options, but we couldn't come up with one of the options. We wanted to do Google Story Speaker today, but we can't do it right now because that is something which is not available in the Google market space. So Inkle Writer right now as a software is only available and which is some, of course which is available free that is a priority otherwise we have immersive reader using uh, microsoft we have uh, we can easily speak and you know we have the audio tag ons in a google doc but then how do you explain the child the concept of logical reasoning and that's what very aptly uh, sangeeta has explained using the Inkle writer i hope we both have been able to explain and answer your question yes ma'am thank you so uh, much for Okay. Harmi, okay. there's one more question. I guess you take this on. How to get Lucid chart? Please explain in brief once. Okay. Uh, lucid chart is, of course, something. Okay. So I will try. Uh, so, um, what do you. So, should I show it from the presentation? 
I think Harvi, just show them the uh, uh, one of the screen uh, uh, without presentation. You just uh, show Good. one of the accounts. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so if you just can go to the Google Drive okay. and share that drive. Okay, so I'm just showing you one of the drives that I have. Okay, so I'll just click on. Uh, let me show you. Let me show you from one which does not have a which does not have the this attempt. So what do I do? I click on plus new in the Google Drive. I go on the more option over here. You will see that I do not have the option of connect of this connected app. Uh, I think who was asking this question? Deepika. Uh, Deepika, can you come on air so that you can ask me simultaneously while I show it to you? Okay. So over yeah, here. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so I will click on the plus option of connect more apps. I click on it. And over here, it will ask me, what is it that you're looking at? So I want to look at usage chart diagrams. I select that option. So it will ask me, do you want to install? I click on the install. It will ask me getting ready. So all the permissions would be required. I click on continue. Are you able to see my screen? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't think you're able to see. No, it's screen. not coming on the screen. Now no. can you see? Now can you see automatically? Yes, yes, yes. yes. It is coming yes. Now. Yeah. So over here, uh, I'm ask, asking. Uh, oops, a second. I'm extremely sorry. So once the permission has been given, it wants to access, just click on the option of allow. Once it is there, signed in, you will see, it will show you that it has been connected. OK? So now we are connected. OK? So I click on it. Screen name. How do I go for it? The screen is not screen. there, ma'am. What happened? Why did you screen share to OK. Maybe because it went back to the previous tab. OK, just a second. Yeah. Which one is this? Yeah. So I click on plus new. I click on more. I go to lucid chart. You can see now it is an attached chat, attached app. The other apps that you see over here are the ones which are automatic. It is not showing on screen, ma'am. Here, uh, it is. It is visible, uh, Deepika. It is visible. Click on more, and you will see uh, the lucid chart option. Can you see, it, Deepika? Uh, once no, Deepika, you not try uh, Harvit, eight minute, huh? Harvit, eight yeah, minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it is visible. It is visible. Visible. Yeah. Okay. So once I click on Lucid Chart, it will ask me you want to log in from which email ID. So I click on Harvit, so whatever is the email ID that I have picked up. Because it's asking me to choose an account again and again, only for the sole reason because I have many lo logged in right now. So here it is going to give me, I can either pick it up from here. So as an example, I pick up from here anything that I want to go that I want to go with right now. Right. So for example, if I look for a template of a floor plan, okay, I click on floor plan. Okay, so I can search for the template also over here. I can write floor plan. And you will see a lot of floor plans are available right now. Uh, I hope you guys are following. I click on the office floor plan. And there it is showing me the template. So I click on the open template. It will take a second to uh, start. And there it is. So it will show me all the shapes available right now. So it is showing me some tips also. I can skip the tips. And I can uh, so I can just uh, <coughs> click on uh, uh, apologies. It's just not going to go away otherwise. OK, so going further, if I want to, just like I had shown you, some uh, Shapes. So I can either pick up, I can redesign my plan also. I can add walls, I can add chairs, I can add table chairs, anything from here. Any any technical device that I want to add up from here. Or 
I can pick up an image. Okay, so I click on uh, image over here. Oh, sorry. I can look for, I can search for an image over here. So I'm, let's say, looking for um, a smart dustbin. Okay, if I want to put that on my design, I click on the smart dustbin. It will show me small icons that I can pick up. So I can pick up the one that I feel is the most apt and is going to fit on my uh, screen. So I let's say pick up. Uh, I pick up this one and I place it here. It's going to be a larger one, so I'll have to reduce it. And wherever you want to place it on your in your house, you can place it over here. If I want to add some text to it, I, I want to so I can drag a line and from the point and on the tip I can actually change the text size. I can say this is a smart sorry, this is a smart dustbin. I can select the text increase the size and that's how I ask my students I can uh, download once the students have placed some devices so I can uh, you know export it as a PDF or as an image once the printouts if you want to create a practical file of their co-curricular activities you can download it as an image or a PDF and you can take out a printout of it and they can attach it in the in the file so this is so you can attach a rubric on how to actually assess whether the student has been able to place they are able to identify and place it and you and this is a very well placed activity that you can do in your class. I hope I have been able to explain. Yes, yes, yes. I am right, Mr. Ma'am. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Uh, are there any other questions? Uh, no, ma'am. There is no. Uh, yeah, there is no question, okay. I think. Yeah. There is only one, uh, Alpana uh, has asked, how we will get these books? So, uh, uh, so that is for Surbhi ma'am. Yeah, yeah, yes. yes. Uh, Ankita is here. I mean, they can probably oh, explain. Yeah. They can so probably we will, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they will be like, uh, they can place their orders directly to us. And yes. uh, all these books are available on our website also, bpbonline.com. So it can be purchased from there as well. So, uh, Harmeet Ji, Sangeeta Ji, I think uh, we should close the session now. Yes, ma'am. Right. Uh, and yes. uh, we thank you very much for this uh, excellent explanation. And uh, it was with great presentations. We really appreciate your efforts. It was uh, very insightful for everyone. And uh, we thank would you. also like to uh, thank dear participants. And uh, it has uh, developed so much of uh, awareness and uh, knowledge among them. So uh, we hope that you all benefited from this webinar. And uh, all the queries received will be answered uh, after the webinar, if there's anything left. OK. So uh, thanks, everyone. Thanks, Sangeeta ji, Harmeet ji, once again. Uh, just as a, just as a reminder. Uh, thank you so much, Surbhi, for the opportunity from mine and uh, Sangeeta's side. Just as an added information over here, uh, we will be back with the next series of webinar, uh, maybe 15 days later. We will be informing you as we have just done right now. And if you're interested, you can always join in for the next one. Thank you so much yes, for your attention. Yeah, and we look forward to see you everyone in our next webinar. Yes, of course. Okay. Thank, thank you, thank you. Uh, It's thank my you. personal request. Just please continue with the AI only when we can next session. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, I'm sorry, I missed the last statement. Uh, uh, AI. Uh, continue they with want the AI you only. to continue with AI. Yeah, yeah, we'll do only AI. Yeah. Uh -huh. we'll do only so AI. They are saying, please continue thank with AI webinars only. Yeah, yeah, we are going to do only AI webinars. <laughs> In fact, for that matter, just to let you know, so there are so many strategies that are being used in the uh, in the curriculum, like Loopy and other things that many of us uh, are trying out in our classes and facing problems. So I think all of those answers will be uh, answers will be given to you. We will even further on go into.